We chose to sail on the Wonder of the Seas because we knew as an Oasis-class ship, it was fun-filled with lots of creative spaces and a range of activities for all ages. But we were still disappointed to get this news on our Coco K day. We have decided to cancel today's call oh, yeah. to Coco K due to the weather. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be um, having a lot more activities uh, on board. Uh, Cruise director is working on that uh, as we speak to make sure that there's always a uh, lot of stuff for all of our guests to do. Well, we're getting an unexpected day at sea. But we're going to see what we can do to make the most of it and take you guys along because they said that the cruise staff is adding a lot of extra activities today. And so we're going to try to maximize the fun. Get ready with Asher. Is that my toothbrush? Huh? That's my toothbrush. I'm going to take you guys to the vending machines later and show you how to buy a new toothbrush. So let's take this day and the other three days at sea for this itinerary to explore this ship from top to bottom and see what Royal Caribbean has to offer on each deck and in each neighborhood for adventurers, families, adult travelers, chillaxers, athletes, music lovers, and shopping fiends. A windy day can't get us down. Since this first full day on board was meant to be a perfect day at Coco Cay, the whole ship was full of families ready to have fun. So the sports zone on deck 16 was pretty packed. We waited our turn for a little mini call. And when we'd had enough golf, which for this crew is about four holes, we made our way to the adjacent Wonder Playscape. This area covers two floors, so keep exploring down to deck 15. Asher wanted to give you a kid's eye tour. Let's go, guys. This is big enough for hide and seek. First fly, let's go on it. So, yeah, I'm going to meet you at the bottom. So, yeah. But this is a Caribbean cruise, and for most people, that centers around pool time. Lifeguards are on duty and life vests are available and required for kids who can't swim. The main pools are on the smaller side with a lot of deck chairs, but even then we couldn't find a seat. Note, when the ship is rocking, this can turn into an instantaneous wave pool, and we got to experience some pretty big onboard waves. But if you don't want to get your hair wet like me, or maybe you just want to get a drink at the Lime and Coconut, and then supervise your kids while they have a blast, head to Splash Away Bay, Royal's signature splash pad with slides, water blasters, and separate areas for the bigger kids and the toddlers. But let's climb out of the pool and go somewhere a little quieter. If you're traveling without children or drop the kiddos off at the kids club, which you can learn all about here, then head to the Solarium Pool, an area exclusively for adults with sleek style and a quieter vibe. This covered deck in 15 forward allows for the space to be used in any weather and I especially love the lighting after dark. Just slow dancing with a lounge chair. Don't mind me. The ships are rocking. There is also an adjoining restaurant, Solarium Bistro, that gives you specialty restaurant vibes, but is included in the price of your cruise. But you'll have to catch the next video for that one. With hot dogs, a candy shop, arcade games, and a beautiful carousel, the Boardwalk neighborhood on Deck 6 is a fun open air spot to explore. This live music is perfect for the Boardwalk.
The boardwalk also has Playmaker Sports Bar, so you can catch the big game even while you're at sea. And at certain times of the day, the Aqua Theater in the aft has rock climbing walls available on either side. But the real reason for the Aqua Theater is the Aqua Show, Intense, which was honestly one of the best shows I've ever seen on a ship. I'm very suspicious that we're doing the Aqua Show with the Splash Zone on White Night. With incredible divers, synchronized swimmers, aerialists, and dancers, this show is not to be missed. Do your best to snag a reservation, but if you don't, there were still some walk-ins available. Let's head down to another neighborhood, the Royal Promenade on Deck 5, filled with shops, snack stops, and bars. Nora is so frustrated that I won't buy her the $6,000 Chanel bag. What have I started? The Promenade also has Spotlight Karaoke. We went to Family Karaoke twice, but the list always filled up too fast for us to get a turn. The hosts were so fun, and we stuck around for a game show afterward. Asher from New Jersey, everyone. All right. Now, Asher, do you like to dance? Sometimes, maybe? A lot. All right. I like it. Go. Woo! Wow. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right, Asher. What moves, my friend? Good job, Asher. Give it up for Asher, everyone. There are also some special events in the promenade, like the midnight balloon drop on the first night or the Anchors Away Parade. Let's go back up to deck 16 for some more practical shopping at Unboxed, just across from the arcade and the teen club. Okay, you better go buy me a toothbrush. We're not buying Pokemon cards. Yeah. No. If you need a phone charger, they do exist. And then all kinds of, basically drugstore in a box. You used my toothbrush. So you owe me that right there. With the tap of your room key, you can get any of the basics, which is super helpful if it's a time when the regular shops are closed. <laughs> it says, you are here. And I was like, oh no, we're out of the ship. <laughs> no, we're up here. <laughs> Now that the kids are dropped off in the club, let's visit the music hall on deck eight to enjoy the jazz ensemble. Do you sneak date nights into your family cruises? So I wanted to talk a little bit about the way that we've been using the kids club so far on this cruise. In the past, when we go on Royal Caribbean, we've really used it as a way for Laura and I to get date night, an adults only vacation in addition to having a family vacation, right? So we do family stuff during the day and then we drop the kids off at night and then we're able to have that evening, whether we do it as a dinner or we linger over drinks or something like that. But interestingly now we've had two nights so far and the first night we did drop the kids off, all three of them after dinner. And so, and night two, 
We only dropped one off because only Nora was interested, whereas the other two wanted to actually stay with us and do some stuff with us, and we were fine with it. So I find it interesting that we didn't say, no, 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 you have to go to the kids' club so that we can go off and have some sort of a date night. And I'm wondering, actually, if the fact that we now have Virgin Voyages, which we've now done once before, we already have two more booked over the next couple of years. I wonder if that's actually serving as like a relief valve for us to have our own parents-only vacation. And it means that we can actually spend more time truly doing family vacation stuff when we're on Royal Caribbean or when we're on Disney Cruise Line. So it'll be interesting to see over the next couple of days what that split is between using the Kids Club and not using the Kids Club. While The Wonder of the Seas doesn't have a big Broadway-style show, and that makes me sad, they have lots of musicians, musical reviews, and comedians that we enjoyed checking out. We loved having a stateroom on Deck 8 and being able to wander into the serene Central Park to take in a musician in the open-air space. We'd pick a table at Giovanni's Wine Bar and order some wine and this giant $3 olive dish from the bar and just relax. Sometimes it was jazz, sometimes guitar, and sometimes this traveling piano man. But you can find him everywhere, from the boardwalk to your nearest elevator. So that's a fun surprise. It's our last full day on board, so we're gonna fit in every last activity that we want to accomplish. Starting with the ultimate abyss. The bionic bar. My theory is that the best time to get to ultimate abyss is about five to 10 minutes before it opens in the morning. We're not morning people, so this is a feat for us, but let's see if it works. When we got here 10 minutes early, we were the first person in line. But we kind of hung out for five minutes, and now there's like 10 people in line. So get here about five minutes early, you're good. Are you excited? No. Are you scared? Oh, it'll be fun. The Ultimate Abyss is a 10 story tall slide using mats to twist and turn from deck 16 to deck 6. What was it like? <laughs> it was a little slower. I really tried to pull as I got going um, to get a little more speed going. That was fun. Some of the most fun is that we just made friends in line. I didn't think I'd be able to take my bag on, but you can. You just tuck it down inside the mat and um, take your stuff with you. So we were both able to go, we were able to race, and I won. There are some flashing lights and a little bit of music and it was fun. It was not scary and it didn't feel as tall as it is. So don't let a fear of heights or anything get to you. We continued the thrill seeking with the zip line. Earlier in the week, Nick had tried to zip line, but they said his shoes were slip on and he needed some more secure footwear. So he got to skip the line pass to return and try again. And this time, Asher decided to take the plunge too. Asher frequently likes to say that he's scared of heights. So this is a brave move for him. It was actually really cool. It was a lot faster than I thought it would be. Because it looks kind of slow when you're watching it, but when you're in the middle of it, it's actually pretty quick. Nora is so, Nora is so happy, I'm okay. To complete the Thrill Ride trilogy, Wonder of the Seas has a Flow Rider. But we're gonna save that for when Ash is a bit bigger. 
Bionic Bar walks the line between food service and cruise activity. But food on a cruise is kind of an activity, so we're going to count it. Because our kids find it super fun to compose a drink for the robot bartenders to make. And if you want to see more food activities, just check out this video here. Yeah. That one was, was fun. Try it, try it. The tropical island. I didn't taste it yet, so let us see if you taste it. Yeah. We also consider Wonderland to be one of those food experiences that is almost an activity. But we only peeked into the space on this sailing. Next time, we promise the kids we will book a dinner for the whole family here so they can experience all the whimsy of Wonderland. Many of these activities were so popular with the kids that we went back again and again. We may have missed a few spots like the arcade and the basketball courts or the spa, but these will probably be part of the cruises when our kids are a bit bigger. Meanwhile, we filled every day of this week-long itinerary, even with the bonus day at sea. Would you want to sail with four sea days? Ooh, maybe even a transatlantic? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you next time, travelers, with more details about the wonder of the seas.